Without further ado, I would like to invite Mufti Ismail Mank to give his lecture for tonight. The title of tonight's lecture is Social Networking, the Islamic Perspective. Jazakumullah khairan, faliyatafaddal, mashkura. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household all his companions we ask Allah to bless them all and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those who have struggled and strove through the years to bring this goodness to us and may Allah bless every one of us and use us to learn put into practice and convey the message not only to those around us but to our offspring as well so that it can continue through the generations Amin. beloved brothers and sisters a beautiful evening with quite a bit of warmth heat and humidity here in this beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur and as I said this afternoon in Jumu'ah, it is a city of food where every other person is talking of makan, makan. And I realized that in the Arabic language, the instruction to eat is kul. Kul means eat. I'm instructing you to eat. And the abbreviation for Kuala Lumpur is exactly the same, K-U-L. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us all and to make us from those who can not only eat the food that we are all used to eating, but to have something spiritual also to nourish our souls and our spirituality. We all know that the world has been overtaken by social networking. Most of us here would be having Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, Google Plus, Google Minus and so on. And we all would know the importance of it such that if you don't see someone online on WhatsApp, you would think they are dead. The same applies to your Blackberry messengers and all the other platforms, some of them perhaps I may not even know. How are we supposed to be using this? The question is, are we supposed to be using this? These are tools that we have that can be used just like a knife for that which is beneficial or that which is detrimental. It depends on you and what you use it for. And not only should we be speaking about the networking itself, but we should be speaking about technology at large. Without that technology, the scope of social networking would be far smaller than it actually is because of the same technology. So, as Muslimin, let's not think that Islam has not taught us regarding the use of these aspects or this new technology of the new age. Islam has come about with rules and regulations that are very broad and at the same time far-reaching. So we will have, for example, a verse of the Qur'an where Allah says, assist one another when it comes to goodness and righteousness and do not help one another when it comes to that which is immoral or evil or full of enmity and so on and be conscious of your maker that is a broad verse that will also govern the way we use technology and the way we network in terms of the social networking if you look at the first point and that is taqwa Allah that is what I would need and you would need if you have taqwa or the consciousness of the Almighty, no matter what you do, you will be able to use it in the right direction and you will be able to steer it, inshallah, in a way that will be of benefit to yourself and to others as well. 
Social networking has made entry into paradise much more accessible than before, arguably so, but worth a thought. Why do we say that? If the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he spoke to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu on the day of Khaybar, and he told him, Wallahi la an yahdi allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrun laka min humurin na'am. Wallahi, if Allah were to use you to guide one person, it is better for you than the most expensive of material items that this world holds. If that is the benefit of being used to guide one person through technology, you can guide a thousand people by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hasn't it become a little bit more easier? You know people you did not know through the same technology. You have learned that which you did not know through the same technology. We have crises and we have solutions to those crises. It depends where you want to fit in. And it makes life very interesting because sometimes, whilst on the negative side, social networking occupies people who have lost track of time because you see them online. The reason I'm laughing is people might say we see you online as well. But you see them online at midnight, at Tahajjud, at Fajr, at Dhuhr, before Asr, at Asr, after that at sunset and late at night. When did you sleep, my brother? Did you read your Salah, my sister? We are ready to say, no, don't worry, there's still five minutes left for Asr. I, I can still send a message. It is such that if you were to think in that way, you will miss your Salah. You will become a person who's oblivious of Allah. You will be oblivious of those who live next to you. How many members of families have already confessed that the best way to talk to my husband is to send him a message on Blackberry and he's sitting right next to me. He's busy WhatsApping all night when I want to say it's about time you sleep and I'm right next to him. I need to send him a message because I've tried to tap him and he thinks it's a mosquito. Allahu Akbar. If that is what we have dropped ourselves to, we have not made use of it. We have not understood what is the Islamic perspective and what we as Muslims should be doing. Nobody is saying you should not have a light moment. No. Even the Prophet ﷺ smiled and he made his family members smile and laugh as well. And he created moments where they blushed as well. Subhanallah. It was not just dry. No. It was full of life. But at the same time, he never forgot his responsibility to Allah. That consciousness of Allah was upon the highest level with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The higher we become by the will of Allah, we will be able to be champions of the cause. We will be able to smile and make others smile. And whilst they are smiling, they will learn a lesson. Allah has given us subhanahu wa ta'ala, every one of us, People whom we know in reality, physically, who either live around us or we have schooled with or we work with or we meet on a regular basis or we are related to or we are somehow connected to in reality and physically. Those people, subhanallah, they have many rights over us because we know them. We can reach out to them in a physical way. If they need, for example, assistance to cross the road, we will be there to help them cross it by the will of Allah. Those are people who are not virtual people, they are real people, they have the first right. So remember, whenever you are on a social networking application or whenever you happen to be on your phone for that matter, which on its own is already a social networking apparatus, remember those who are to be given preference as a Muslim are those who are physically in front of you. Don't lose track of that. So many people would be talking to you and before you know it, they're looking down in a world of their own. What happened my brother? What a big insult. If the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says that when two people are chatting or talking to one another, it would be incorrect for a third one to butt in. And it would be incorrect for a third one not to be asking permission before he enters the discussion of these two. Then what do you think of a person who is entering the discussion by remote control without even being there? He only dialed the phone 
or he only sent a message or they were on what is called WeChat. You know what is WeChat? When you have more or less, I was told it's like a walkie-talkie. You know, you record your voice and it registers the other side. You record your voice and it comes out the other side. I see people are nodding. Don't worry, I have not yet used it, but I tried. I actually tried yesterday. One of the brothers told me, you know what is WeChat? I said, I've got it on my phone. I think someone introduced me to it, but I've not activated it. And at the end of the day, I said, well, tomorrow we will be speaking about WeChat. So if you allow someone to steal from the discussion that you are having with a physical person in front of you, you have lost the proper Islamic etiquette of that physical discussion. Remember this. If your phone rings or you would like to answer a message, you need to at least be courteous and tell the person you are speaking to, look, my brother, can I quickly take this call? And the word quickly means very quickly, inshallah. Don't say, can I quickly take the call? And for 15 minutes, you are busy speaking such that the person says, okay, salamu alaikum, I'll see you later. And you just nod your head and you carry on speaking and you, it's like the discussion came to an end. This is happening. It's a reality in society. And nobody has come about to train us or to teach us. My brother, discipline yourself. My sister, you need to know what it is all about. Discipline yourself. Without discipline, this tool can destroy you completely. As much as it can benefit you and take you, as I said, to paradise, it can drive you in the other direction. So be very careful. You ask for permission. Can I please answer this call very quickly? Or can I quickly send this message? I'm very sorry. And you send it. Or you answer and say, I will call you back. And please let that statement be an honest statement. Because there are some, they tell you, I'll call you back. That means I do not want to speak to you. Do you hear loud and clear? I'll call you back. We are Muslims, let's be honest. This is a social apparatus. It has become something that is now considered a necessity by the majority on the globe. Do you know that? People used to say, is it permissible or not? The discussion is over. Now there is a new discussion. Teach us how to use it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Because it has become a necessity. Children as early as the age of 5 and 10 already are flashing the latest of mobile phones. When I came to Malaysia the last time, I mentioned the S4. Today I will mention the S5. Do you know why? When I mentioned the S4, it was not yet out. Now that I've come, it's out. If I speak of the S5, by the time I come back again, perhaps it will be out. Allahu Akbar. My phone was freezing earlier today. And I said, are you jealous that the S4 is out? Allahu Akbar. May Allah open our doors. My brothers and sisters, we need to learn lessons. Technology is out there to overtake us if we are not going to keep in pace with that particular technology. Technology is moving faster than myself and yourselves. Before you know it, you will see that which is amazing and amusing. If you have read what the S4 can do, it can read your eyes. As you look down the page, it scrolls for you. I don't know if you've read that already. Everybody's nodding their head, mashallah, almost everybody. That means we are keeping up to pace. That same technology, those eyes, as a phone can register where we are looking, bear in mind, it is registered where we are looking, whilst we are not looking at that particular phone, when the law of the Sharia says, lower your gaze, make sure you do so. There is eye recognition of your iris and your pupil. And Allah knows where you are looking. When you look down, your spirituality scrolls up. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. But today, we have a very great issue that needs to be tackled. And that is the issue of pornography that is available in these social networking applications and sites an apparatus and the scourge or the menace is such that it has gone to those as young as six and seven years of age who have come up later on and confessed as to when they had started astaghfirullah what they might term lowering their gaze when it was actually not lowering it they will tell you I was looking down at my phone if you, what you were looking at was nude and unacceptable. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it has an impact and it leaves a mark in your brain. 
your heart, your spirituality is damaged. It's like a Ferrari going into a wall. And believe me, even if it is repaired by panel beating, people would know, you would know, this car is damaged. It's no longer as it was. Keep yourselves away from it. Wallahi, it cannot bring about any goodness. Pornography will only damage you. It will only make you do the absurd. It will make you a person who has, a, who has low morals and who thinks everyone else has low morals as well. It will make you fed up of your status that Allah has given you as a male or a female to the degree that what you might term to be adventurous in terms of developing a link with the same sex would actually be a contamination of your mind by the devil. Something that is absolutely prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There comes a time when Muslimin, people who are supposedly uttering the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There comes a time when people who have uttered that shahada, when they get hooked onto such dirt on their phones or on their laptops and tablets and so on, they begin to think of changing their gender and some of them have gone ahead and tried it and some of those have come back to regret when it is too late. This is why it's an open matter. If you watch the Western world, they get fed up. They get fed up of their lives. What is termed freedom, they are tired of exposing their bodies. They are tired of people praising them. Now they get a kick out of the same sex praising them. Then they get tired of that and they don't know what to do so they begin to tattoo their bodies. All this has become so pressurizing through these social networks because people are talking about it, people are encouraging it, yet nobody is going to those who have regretted and perhaps created a club of those who have done regretful items in their lives, perhaps create a forum of those who have regretted the tattoos that they have placed on their bodies, some of them are irreversible. So they start off thereafter by tattooing their bodies. This also is prohibited in the Sharia. The body that you have, my brothers and sisters, is an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not supposed to be using it and doing what you want with it according to your whims and fancies, but it is according to the will of Allah. Whatever Allah has permitted is permissible. Whatever He has prohibited is definitely something you should be staying away from. So after they tattoo, they get fed up of that because now they realize sometimes their whole bodies are full of tattoos. And I'm sure you may have heard of this or you may have come across adverts in the papers or you may have seen sometimes little clips of people who have tattooed from the top to the bottom. And thereafter they regret, regret too late. So now what do they do? They say, I'm a male, I'd like to be a female. How did this happen? Because people are fed up of their lives. They don't know why they are living. Whereas Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. Which means except that they do that which I have ordained, that which is not prohibited, that which is in order to please me, that which has within it the consciousness of myself, Allah says. So what is your aim in life? Brothers and sisters, my aim is to prepare for the day I meet with Allah. That's my aim. Everything I do in my life, I need to ask myself, will this help me the day I meet with Allah? If it is not going to help you, ask Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive me. I have done so many bad things. The world loves me. But if you don't, I have lost. And if the world hates me, but you love me, I have gained. And there will not be an instance where Allah loves you and nobody else loves you. Because Allah will send the love for you upon those who are pure and clean on the earth as well. So these are some of the gifts of Allah upon us, where He has reminded us constantly who you are, O man, where you are heading. And what should be your aim, my brothers and sisters? I have no guarantee that I will leave this masjid, nor do you. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of this. 
So if I were to go here and now, how did my WhatsApp help me? How did my Facebook account help me? How did my Twitter account help me or Google Plus or LinkedIn or anything else for that matter? How did it help me? If I am a person who does not know how to use it, don't use it. It may be to your detriment. This is why we say it is very important for us to lay rules and regulations. How many people have I sent a good message to today from amongst my friends? It doesn't have to be a very long message like an encyclopedia that people become bored to read. No. It can be a short, sharp message. And sometimes we need to know that is not a forum for issuing decrees of religion. Each person has a Facebook account for different reasons. Some have an account to help one another. Some have an account because they run a school. Some have an account because of their family members. Some have little groups on BBM or on WhatsApp or for example on Twitter. And they have little groups of people, closed groups of relatives or friends or like-minded people and so on. So each one knows why he or she is using whatever platform he or she is using. If you were to ask me, I will tell you, I try my best to use it to give a good message, which has in it a reality that is occurring on the ground. And at the same time, it might result in a debate or a discussion. Sometimes I choose not to get involved in it. Listen to what people have to say. When you hear them, you might be able to understand how to tackle in the future. May Allah grant us goodness. If you don't listen to the new generation and their ideas and their thoughts, how will you be able to streamline those thoughts and those ideas? If you were a person who said, your view has no value. We want to hear what you have to say so that we know either we need to be guided or you might need to be streamlined. The only way that can happen or one of the ways, let's say, that that can happen is by guidance. The little tapping. If you have a bucket that is leaking of one droplet of water on a rock that is underneath it at a distance of about two meters, for example, there will come a time when five or ten buckets of droplets have finished that there will be a hole straight through the rock. Do you know that? Why? Because it was a short, simple, small, little droplet that fell on the same spot for one year. What did it do? It created a hole. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ Allah speaks of how even the stones and the rocks they sometimes have water or rivers that gush out of them by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the hearts of man are sometimes harder than that. May Allah use us to soften the hearts. But before that, may He soften our own hearts. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, as we see technology and as we see the youth and as we see the young all on their phones, it is important we make this the discussion of the age because we would be wrong if we didn't. Mobile phones have become, as I said, in most communities and societies a necessity. It's only the age that changes or differs from community to community. So if you do not guide your child and speak to your child or discipline yourself, Wallahi, that can result in your destruction. We have seen many people go astray. Do you know why? Because they don't have the guidance how to choose which groups to join and which not to join. And sometimes they ask scholars whom they trust, can we join this group or that group? Sometimes the scholars don't know. A research would be needed before you would be told yes or no. Did you know that there are countless groups and websites that pretend to be Muslim, yet they are run by the enemies of Islam and the non-Muslims. Do you know that? I have come across several sites and I have been told of many more. And how many of us sometimes we just subscribe to things because we think it's cool and we think, wow, everybody else has. 
without knowing in reality this might not be beneficial for me when the Quran says help one another regarding righteousness and goodness we need to do this so I ask you what have you done today how many people have you touched with a short message from amongst your family members from your circle as the Quran says you start off with the inner circle and then you progress and you proceed we all know Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara O you who believe save yourselves and your family members from the fire that fire very dangerous the fuel shall be stones and man that is what Allah says save yourselves and your family members so what did you do today in terms of a positive message to your family members to save them from that fire my brothers and sisters we have a crisis and that crisis is deepening and that is what I would like to term social unrest within the house social unrest within your home with your spouse your children your parents your brothers and sisters that is the first circle you are supposed to be concentrating on yet what has happened it has become the last and it has become by the way because I have friends who are more important than my mother and I have acquaintances online as far as Papua New Guinea if I pronounce that correctly or Hawaiian Honolulu my favorite words notice I didn't say places because I haven't been there yet to confirm I have friends who are across the continents and I give them preference over my children my child is crying for me but my attention is with someone whom I don't even know who could be with a false identity making my time completely wasted so the circle that you should be beginning with is your own remember the real life even if it means sending a message to your family create a link with them a good message and when you preach I know that's a strong word but when you preach goodness remember to understand the level of the person you are calling towards goodness moments ago I was speaking with some brothers and we were saying it is very important to speak to people on their level speak to people according to the level of their understanding speak to people with what they understand they can relate to and this is why when you want to call someone towards goodness if they are say for example goodness was equivalent to a high jump for example if goodness was equivalent to a high jump and everybody is jumping 40 centimeters and your bar was set at 1 meter 40 centimeters they would look at it and say I'm never going to be able to get there and that would be over and they would probably lose hope and they would be satisfied with their 40 meters they might even give up jumping high but if their bar is set at 40 meters and you are encouraging them to get to 45 when they're at 45 they get to 50 then they get to 60 what are you doing you are relating to them and you know the pressure of society and community and you understand globally what is going on because believe me we have a beautiful environment this evening in the masjid spirituality is of the highest in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but my brothers and sisters the moment you walk out that spirituality will no longer be on that particular level subhanallah it will drop so if you have not done something to change your life or to make a difference based on what you've heard today within 24 hours or within 48 hours the chances of you turning have become far more slim so what we should realize and understand my brothers and sisters sorry there was a little bit of a distraction I don't know what happened actually I just saw a shadow on my left and uh, it, it distracted me slightly let's try and go back to social networking which is a bigger distraction than this my brothers and sisters social networking really it's a distraction that we need to yes now I remember what I was saying we were saying that if you don't understand the level of the people around you you may 
and I have seen this happening, be setting the bar so high that the bulk or the masses may not be able to look at that bar with an intention of getting to it, but they might look at it with the feeling that that is too high for me, I'm not going to get there. This is why we say, let there be from amongst us those who might be strict and let there be from amongst us those who might be slightly lenient at the end of the day. All of us are trying to get to the same level, my brothers and sisters. I want to get to paradise, don't you? I want to get to paradise, don't you? May Allah gather us in paradise. I need to be as bothered about your paradise as I am about mine, but I know on mine I can work, on yours I can only encourage. And I can perhaps look towards you to encourage me also to earn that paradise of mine. So, as I said, if it was a high jump, we would have to set it at 45 and then 50. By the time we get to 1 meter 20, people will be jumping. What did you do? You took them, mashallah, beautifully. Now, I know some might be sitting, I have a son who's quite a good high jumper, alhamdulillah. And he will be impressed with this example. But what happens? Some people shoot up overnight before you know. He's grown taller than you, subhanallah. So he skips over the 1.4, mashallah. And he tells you, dad, you're only calling towards 1.4. Guess what? I'm at 1.5. If that happens, we say, alhamdulillah, nurun ala nur. Which means goodness upon goodness, light upon light. Something that you wanted and something that has been achieved which is above what you actually intended. So this is why we say, be careful how you use technology. It will make you or break you. Reality. Now comes the question mark. All these little apps, little websites, even your mobile phones, just the ordinary phone, SMS or calls, those who have come up with these ideas have had something in mind, something very beautiful in mind. One of the things, they created a little button, which if you were to press that button, you would be able to block those whom you do not want to associate with. Do you know that? If you have any mobile phone similar to mine, or any other phone, you have a block. You can block people from messaging you. You can block people from phoning you. You can block people from sending you a message on WhatsApp or on your Blackberry or on Twitter or Facebook. You can block people from messaging you. Yes, you can. Why do they do it? Because they don't want harassment. My brothers and sisters, spiritually, if something is wrong, detrimental to your link with your maker, detrimental to the preparation that you are trying to make, for the day that you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then block it. The blocking of it will help you meet Allah in a condition of peace. Sometimes we develop links with the opposite sex that are unnecessary. May Allah strengthen us. It is governed by what you say, who you link with, how you say it and why you are saying it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen the youth and the adults, because this is a crisis that overtakes all ages. The older people used to say, I'm too old for technology. A lot of them are now swallowed in it, in the sense that they, they have started using it, at least the mobile phone, mashallah. At least the SMS, and that's where it starts from. They used to say SMS stands for short messaging system. Some of the youth have come up with something else. I'll leave it to your imagination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us. We don't want the SMS to be used for anything besides that which is beneficial. So my brothers and sisters, here you have a lot that the Sharia has spoken about. Perhaps not directly, but definitely indirectly. And if you want to look at it, even directly. All those verses and all those ahadith that a lot of us would know of by heart, governing the way we should be talking to people and governing our lives and what is beneficial that should be done and what is detrimental that should be abstained from, we will realize that those laws extend even to the way we use our social network. If I were to ask you today, how many of you do not have an account on Facebook? 
can I see by a show of hands for my sake how many do not have an account mashallah my brothers and sisters there are a few hands here very few I would like to put it at about 1% congratulations to you you don't need it perhaps you don't need it because the real life is more important than the virtual life but the point being proven is 99% of us we have that account. So what are you doing with it? That I don't need the answer of. It's between you and Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I can do and what you can do for me is make sure you are conscious of Allah when you are pressing those buttons. Think of Allah. And tell yourself, Allah knows what I'm doing. He knows I'm about to click send. And this image is not supposed to go to this person. So don't send just like sometimes your phone does you a favor by freezing when you are about to say something bad you need to understand let that spirituality of yours have the same effect it must make you freeze or tremble within the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say this is not going to help me the day I die why I say this every action has a reaction the beauty is when we act in a way that displeases Allah there is a reaction, but that reaction sometimes is delayed for Allah to give us a chance to repent so we can actually change the reaction of an action based on another action which is known as repentance. If I have done something bad, I will see the result of that bad either in my life, in my health, in my wealth, in my children, in my family, in my business, in my death, in my life after death because if you do something it is a law that we all know of physics there is an equal or counter reaction and in the case even of your sin Allah says we won't multiply the sin but we give you back whatever you deserve but Allah says the door of repentance is open what a beautiful door we are human beings we get carried away with adverts social media has on it advertisements what type of adverts? They advertise clothing. They advertise hairstyles. They advertise the trends. They advertise words that are dangerous. Swear words that are very bad. Good people utter the F word as though it is a greeting. It's a fact. You might wonder why I'm saying it here. I'm saying it because we all know what I'm talking about. That's the reason. Good people utter bad words thinking that it is acceptable this is only a friend of mine Allah is watching don't you know so be careful of these adverts be careful of the pressure of those whom you associate with if you have a Twitter account and you are following thousands of people whose morals are very low it's only a matter of time before your morals drop even by 1% and that is a loss imagine if I were to tell you your business is going to suffer a loss by 1% if your business is a multi-million dollar business, 1% is a few million. Subhanallah. I see people are looking at me to say, hey, you're talking big bucks. You're talking big money here. The example I'm giving you is far higher. It is far greater. It is that of your heart, your spirituality, your link with your maker. How can I allow that to be compromised solely by reading so many messages? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something similar in Surah An-Nur. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ One of the meanings of that verse is, those who love to spread tales of immorality amongst the believers, for them will be a painful punishment in this world and the next. Allah knows and you do not know. Do you know what is being termed wrong and haram here? To spread tales of immorality, whether it is a dirty joke or a dirty reality. If you are spreading that type of a tale, on your social networks or relating them even verbally to believers or to others you are engaged in a sin because when a thousand people read that 
they might feel, well, this is the norm of what's going on, so for me to be immoral will be quite normal. And then they start considering immorality a norm, and they look down upon those who are of high morals and values. Because they start thinking, sister, how can you dress covered from top to bottom when we are in the 21st century? Sister, you don't know. We are living in the 21st century. All of us are naked. Why are you covered? So the sister will say, no, I'm a Muslim and this and that. And mashallah, if she is strong and she has a strong base of like-minded friends, she will remain that way and perhaps excel and become better. But if she doesn't and she keeps on being bombarded by those whose tweets or whose messages she has chosen to read, there will come a time when off goes the scarf. There will come a time when the skirt, like I say, is no longer a mini skirt, but the me from it has also disappeared and it's become a me skirt. Allahu Akbar. Follow what I said? I said it two weeks ago at home and they found it quite amusing. Because it's a reality. The skirts are becoming shorter until there will be no skirt. Until there will come a time on the globe, mark my words, when the norm, astaghfirullah, might be people moving around in the nude. May Allah protect us from that age. How will you save yourself? By associating with those who have higher values than you. Read their messages, see them. Even if you are not on that level, it will keep you going. But if you are a person who keeps on reading messages of low morals, you have dirty jokes, as soon as you see it, you laugh so much and you forward it to all your religious friends, what will happen? There will come a time when those religious friends, if they do not stop you from it, they will begin to forward you similar messages. See how the world will drop. Allahu Akbar. The morality dropped by 1%. Thereafter too, instead of going up, and instead of us becoming closer to Allah as we grow in age, we become people who cannot wait to commit a sin because we realize, you know, it's so easy to commit a sin. Some of the youth that I've spoken to, they say, to commit adultery is as good as saying, or is as easy as saying hello to people. And I say, I don't think so. They say, you don't know. I say, I don't want to know. Allahu Akbar. May Allah not make that true. If that is the case, our children are facing pressures. Whether it be, and remember we are talking to an international audience, whether it be in the schools of the western countries or the companies that people keep in terms of friends or even in countries of this nature. If we have friends online who have low morals and values, perhaps they may make you have an urge to commit adultery when you were not such a person before. Why? Because of your social network. So you start thinking, whoa, what's going on here? It's so simple, it's so easy, it's so accessible. In the same way that goodness is accessible through the same social networking, sin has also become very easily accessible. Click of a button and you will be able to know 500 people within one kilometer of you who are sharing the want to commit the same sin that you would like to commit because of something called meet me or four square and so on sometimes if it is used incorrectly then it is used in that direction as well if you're looking at me confused thank Allah thank Allah because if you are confused as to the abuse of this type of technology then remember there is still some purity in you and if you know how it works it does not make you impure but the winner is he who knows how it works and knows how to abstain from it and knows the danger of it. The reason why we have this talk here at this university this evening, although we are addressing an international audience, is because it is about time we started addressing the real issues of social networking. You might enjoy using it, but for what? It starts off with goodness, mashallah. No, I'd like to follow the sheikh, or I'd like to listen to this person, and I'd like to get some spiritual message. And thereafter, you have friends. Vet your friends. Vet your friends because a tweet can be like a spear that has been released from an arrow. Sorry, from a bow. Let me reword that. A tweet can be like an arrow that has been released from a bow. 
that will pierce you perhaps straight in the heart and its effect can be so deep in you that it can result in your spiritual destruction completely yet it was just one tweet so be careful who you follow what you read what you allow yourself to go through and also the image you carry and you portray of yourself is extremely important choose your profiles carefully make sure you are giving the proper picture of who you are because when people see different profiles and everyone is behind Justin Bieber for example and everyone is behind Paris Hilton for example I don't think many are behind her at the moment but everyone behind this one and that one and they see wow this is a good Muslim and look at them wow this is a brilliant Muslim look at that do you know you are responsible because you have made it fair seeming to those who are unsuspecting from amongst your brothers and sisters who look up to you to follow people who are not worth following solely because you and a thousand others are following them so it becomes a trend and it becomes something that people want to look at solely because the others are doing the same so if I delete those type of people and if my likes are connected to Allah and his Rasul and goodness and educational matters of benefit and that which will help me in this world and the next Wallahi as popular as you may be amongst your circle of friends or I may be I will be sending the correct message to thousands of those who look up to me to say if you really would like to follow then you need to follow someone who's going to give you a good message I hope we understand this why I say this people say no it's harmless it might be harmless for you who has the power to distinguish but not for those who might look up to you and start following in a way that those people become the misguiders of the ones who were guided but they click like on a misguided person because you had click like on the same person you might think I'm being a bit hard here this is food for thought why is it food for thought because the greatest food for thought is the fact that you should be preparing for the day you meet Allah if you say ya Allah I might have been a weak Muslim but I did not impose on others weakness I did not give others direction in the wrong path or upon the wrong path why I say this the verse I read before you about helping each other in the path of goodness it includes this if I have shown them a bad example my brothers and sisters because of me and because of how popular I am they wanted to imitate me they wanted to follow because so many of us have been following those who are bad when they begin to follow do you know what would have happened you get to the day of judgment and then you see a pile of deeds and you say but these are not my deeds these are evil deeds that I did not commit how would you like it if you were told well these are the people who did these evil deeds because of the click of a button that you had pressed although you did not do the evil deed yourself and this is why man sanna sunnatan sayyi'atan falahu wizruha this hadith I've repeated it so many times in this particular country whoever sets a bad example shall receive the sin of having done that or and of those who followed the bad example so if you cannot guide someone the minimum do not misguide them if you cannot be of use to guide someone whether it is through social networking or through other means do not be a source of their misguidance because what will happen as a result you may be piling up misdeeds on your shoulders and some people think how can I carry the burden of others you will never carry the burden of another unless you are connected to it in terms of encouragement or instruction so my brothers and sisters enjoy your telephones enjoy your tablets I'm not talking of the tablets of the, those who are in depression Allah grant them Shifa I don't know why they call it a tablet I actually sat and thought there is a capsule and there is a tablet both of them connected to technology and both of them happen to be a remedy of a sickness have you thought of it the tablet is only prescribed to those who are ill and sick I use a tablet mashallah but at the same time it's only used when necessary you have a mobile device the world is at your fingertips the world is at your fingertips 
enjoy the use of that. Asking yourself with every move you make, will this be pleasing to my maker? Have I improved or have I gone back? Has my morality and level of it gone up or has it come down? And wallahi you will be able to enjoy. You will really be able to look at it and say, MashaAllah, I've become such a better person. Take a look at YouTube for example. I'm sure the fathers of YouTube did not imagine for a moment that it would be a tool that would turn people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Amazing. I know of literally hundreds of people. I'm sure there are thousands if not millions. But I know of hundreds of people who have confirmed to say this little apparatus or app of social networking which is of a total different nature. It works slightly differently. The apparatus known as YouTube, whether it is from a computer or a tablet or an iPad or a little Android device or what have you, they say it has definitely resulted in me getting closer to my maker or understanding my link with Allah. Well, good news to the hundreds. Good news to you. You've used it in the right direction. But bad news to a lot of people who have used it in the wrong direction. Wallahi. Some people, every small thing, they send a message. They tweet it to the world. And what do they do? They video themselves doing the weirdest of things in order to just create a hype on the globe. If that has happened, perhaps you are sucked in by the trends of those who use it for the wrong reasons. So use it wisely. I'm wording it very lightly, to be honest with you. Very lightly. By saying, use it wisely. You have a brain. You are a Muslim. You are not an ordinary human being. You are an extraordinary human being. Because above being a human, you know your creator. You worship him alone. You put your head on the ground five times a day. How then can you utilize this type of technology to destroy that link between you and your maker? So as we say, turn to Allah. I should too. Make use of it. Do something. And when people see you doing something, believe me, it will make a difference. I'm sure from amongst us, there are many people who are very important. In fact, every one of us is very important. We are very, very important to different circles of people. Each one of us is a VIP in his or her own way to different circles of people. Remember, they look up to you. They look up to you. Whatever you do, they want to do. Even if it means just your children, or even if it means others who are your schoolmates or in college with you. So if you set a trend of goodness, believe me, it will keep multiplying up to the end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may grant you paradise. This is the goodness. Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi, he was once sitting with his class of students and he said, if you don't see me in paradise, make mention of me and say, that there was a man who used to encourage us to do good. We don't see him here. Where is he? Subhanallah. So if you make it to paradise, you can mention the man who, who used to instruct you to do good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all paradise. Through, our, through his mercy. Our deeds mean sometimes absolutely nil. Because although we try, the sincerity level sometimes are failing. Technology distracts us. Very big distraction. Sometimes we start salah and next thing you hear the ringtones and the beeps of the WhatsApp messages and the weird beeps and that brings me to a point that I need to mention here and now. My brothers and sisters, what type of a reminder do you have on your phone? Answer the question to yourself. What type of a ringtone do you have? Remember you are in the house of Allah. Ask yourself, I am supposed to be preparing for the day I meet the maker himself subhanallah the one who made me i want to meet him when i meet him how will this tone of reminder have helped me do i have a dirty tone that when it rings in the house of allah i am cursed by those who have come to worship allah people are weak not everyone you harm will pray for you not everyone you will you will harm will pray for you some when they hear this ringtone of the dirtiest songs, 
with the dirtiest lyrics of the dirtiest people whose lives are totally upside down in the purest of places, in the most sacred of the days of the week, during the most sacred time of that day. Whilst the Imam is speaking or whilst the Salah is on, what do you think they will do? When they hear that, they just have to say, I don't even want to say the curse. I don't, it's not befitting. But imagine they just have to utter one word of curse. Or they just have to give you a dirty look with your eyes. Who knows that might be a moment of answering of prayer. Your ringtone could have been better my brothers and sisters. And this is why I say and I challenge you to change the ringtone on your phone if it is a ringtone that might result in distress to your spirituality and that of others. Change it. Be a person who is upright. This is social networking. Don't use it in a way that people will curse you as a result. And like I said, the house of Allah has in it pious people who have come to worship Allah, to listen to a message of goodness. And your irritating phone has rung three times in the first rakah of salah. I'm still waiting for a day when someone picks up his phone, hey, I'm in salah, put it down. I've seen it happening around the Kaaba with Tawaf. I have not yet seen it in Salah. Salah, I've already had a man wave at me once because I saw a man looking around in Salah and I was walking and I waved at him and he waved back. <laughs> and I said, look at the concentration. You are supposed to be plugged in with your maker. So imagine the point I'm making is if you and I have to have a phone that distracts people from their link with Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Your link is not there, but don't force other people to break their link. That's the point. It's a powerful point. Your link might be weak, but you are harming someone whose link is so powerful. There might be people whose concentration in Salah has been immaculate for years on end. And here you come one day on a Friday, dressed well and you are smart and you have mashallah the itur and you have come into the masjid and the brothers are greeting you and you stand next to a man who is concentrating in his salah and next thing the biggest song of Bollywood is now playing and the, the, the imam is saying غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Ya Allah, we don't want to be led astray not the path of those whom who have earned your anger, know the path of those who are astray. And the man next to you says, Amin. Because to him, you are one who is astray. <laughs> How would you like that? How would you like that? Imagine, the Imam is saying, we don't want to follow the path of those who are astray. And you are busy with Bollywood songs in the masjid. Hollywood songs, Zollywood, Nollywood, Dollywood, now there's so much. Allahu Akbar You might want to know where I got Zollywood from You know where I come from, don't you? <laughs> Allah says, God us, my brothers, my sisters Change that tone Such that if by mistake it does ring It's not such a big embarrassment You know, it's a ringtone that reminds you I had a brother who told me Jazakallah khair for telling us this Because I used to get up for Fajr At the sound of someone I won't say just now someone is adventurous and wants to try it he says I thought it was such a soothing sound that I would get up for Fajr with it and I used to he says but now I realize I'm using a woman who is naked who is dirty whose life is a total mess who is on antidepressants you know not a galaxy tablet but other tablets and at the same time she has so much going on in her life that she is suicidal and just because her voice was good and the lyrics were very dirty I used to use that as a tone the brother says for Salatul Fajr and I realized very quickly only when I was reminded by you that you can do better and I thought of it before that I hadn't even thought of it and this brings me to a point technology sometimes makes you do bad things without even knowing that they are bad because you've never given it a thought you haven't thought about it but it's wrong and you say but everyone's doing it well everyone doing it if the whole world does that which is wrong it does not make it right Allahu Akbar and if the whole world does that which is right it will never be wrong may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he use us to be disciplined remember today's talk is more about self-discipline 
how to use what you have in your pocket. Make sure that you have done something which is termed an ibadah, an act of worship, every single day. Say a message of goodness. When you greet someone, greet with salam. When you respond, respond with a dua. Say some form of goodness, utter a good word, abstain from bad words. When someone says something evil, two ways of responding. If you have a link with them, you can tell them brother, you can tell them in different ways, my brother or my sister, the way you worded it, or, or you can actually say, you can word what you sent to me better. Stop. So even if they have sent you a bad word and you were too shy to say, hey, you are wrong. Because today people are, people feel very offended. And you know what happens when I tell you, sister, you are wrong. She says, right, no longer listening anymore again. And I don't want to hear anything and I don't want to know. Out. Blocked and deleted. Just because I told you what you are doing is wrong. So now we've got to enter from the side. You know a crab, have you ever seen a crab walking? It walks, it walks forward, but it pretends like it's walking to the side. Have you seen it? You have a lesson to learn from it. Nowadays, we have to speak people to, to people sometimes and remind them in that way. How? So if you say, sister, you are wrong, she might delete you forever. And she might think bad, this man is, you know, very bad, and he's like this and like that, or this sister, or whatever. Rather than that, you send them a polite message, sister, you know what? What you worded, or what you sent to me, can be worded better. It will sound much better. They might not understand initially, but if you send that message a few times, they will get the message. And sometimes, if you have a habit of responding to a good message, and not responding to a bad message, do you know what will happen? People will get the message. Every time someone sends you a good message, you say, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, I appreciate that message. And when they send you a bad message, don't reply at all. Even if you don't reply at all, they will get the message. This person does not appreciate the bad. And believe me, if that happens, if 20 of your friends give you that treatment, you will stop sending bad messages. I want to tell you what happened to me last night. Someone sent me a little image on WhatsApp, which was a joke. And I forwarded that message to a friend of mine. And the friend of mine immediately sent me a message to say, I know it's a joke, but I wouldn't have expected it to come from you. It was nothing bad as such, but when I thought about it, I said, yes, it could be something that doesn't sound good coming from a person who, who is looked up to by others for direction. It was something light. It was actually just a joke. Very, very light. Minor. Something small. An image which had in it a joke. I'm sure all of you are curious. What is it? Don't worry, you won't know. <laughs> and only when I thought about it, I'm talking of myself. When I thought about it, I said, Wallahi, this is correct. I appreciate. Immediately, I sent a message to say, True, it won't happen again. Imagine, I'm talking of my own example. Why I say this? We are talking of a real life topic today, which affects me and you. And social networking is not a shallow term. It has in it almost all aspects of my life and yours today. Whatever you want. I want to buy my air tickets. I can do it through the phone. I want to check what the price of eggs is in China. I'm sure there is an app. Allahu Akbar. It's a reality. I'm sure there is an application to do anything. So, what have you done with your phone? What have you done with technology? What have you done in order to enhance your link with Allah? Like I say, think about it. Before you click send, think about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us not from amongst those, something's come to my mind, from amongst those who are auto-corrected by our friends and those whom we mix with. Why I say this a few days ago, I tweeted something. And auto-correct happened to correct instead of your, Y-O-U-R, it happened to put an apostrophe R-E, so it means you are, isn't it? And that was, I mean, I, I hope my English is not that bad, but it went out. I had an option of deleting it, but I saw, whoa, this thing's been retweeted by 50, 60 people already. No point in deleting. Admit, you're just a human being. So what happened? I said, wow. It was speaking about 
something to do with rushing I think, something to do with rushing to conclusions or something of that nature. And I said, and I shouldn't rush to press, to press the send button, I should read before I actually send the message. And I tried to pat the back of autocorrect by saying, yes, you know, blaming autocorrect. The reality is, we are autocorrected by our friends. You know what that means? You say the right thing, you do the right thing. When you mix with the wrong people online, automatically you are autocorrected in a wrong way. So what was right initially in your mind and your heart and your level becomes totally wrong because of those you mix with. So remember, choose your friends online wisely. And I want to end by making mention of the most powerful point. Well, in fact, there are two points. The first is, set yourself a time, my dear brothers and sisters. Time is a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is of essence. It clicks and ticks, whether you like it or not. Time ticks, no matter what, and it clicks. So set yourself a time and be strict. If you have a minute this way or that way, it's a leeway. Don't ever say to yourself, now I'll read my salah just now. Because the first way shaitan gets to you is to distract you by saying, I will do it just now. That's if you're a good person. If you're a good person and shaitan wants you to miss your prayer, shaitan wants you to go astray. He says, okay, you will do it just now. You know, there's still a bit of time. So when you tell yourself, there is still five minutes before salah, that statement itself is already in the direction that is wrong. Tell yourself, stop it, let me go ahead. No matter how valuable the person is, unless it's a matter of life and death, you stop it and you read your salah, you fulfill your link with Allah. So set yourself a time. If you do not set yourself a time, the first people to suffer, yourself, your link with Allah, your health, your immune system, because your sleep is affected. Then you start coughing, then you are sick, then your belly, your food doesn't digest. You need sleep, you need specific hours of sleep, you need the sleep of the night, and you need to understand sleep early, get up early. We are taught that from Islam, as well as even the non-Muslims would tell you to sleep early and to get up early. Thereafter, your family suffers. Your spouse, if your marriage is not almost broken, then you are living on a miracle. What this means is, if you are a person who has no track of time when it comes to use of your social networking and you are on it all day and all night and your marriage is still working, you are a miracle child. Believe me, you are one in a million. You want your marriage to work, sometimes all that is needed is just to govern the amount of time you spend on your phone. That's it. You will find your marriage working like a house on fire. To this day, I don't know why they say a house on fire. I think because of the inferno. Couldn't they have chosen something better? You know, a house on fire depicts destruction. Allahu Akbar. But it's true that if you are to govern the time, your children will be happier people, my brothers and sisters. Your spouses will be happier. Your parents, those around you will be happier. So that is the time. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will now use these social networks to develop ourselves and we will set aside a time. People must know, if I'm not online, I'm not. And if I am, I am. And remember, there is an irritation that occurs in the eyes of some people and their hearts. When they message you, they expect an instant reply. And they'll tell you, this is instant messaging. So, I want an instant reply. Brothers and sisters, do not be tempted to respond to every message you get. Don't be tempted to reply everyone who wants a reply. Don't. You need to be in control of yourself and your life. You will respond when you want to reply, when it is beneficial. People can suck you into immorality and evil or anything else that is negative. We ask Allah to open our doors. Do not reply everyone who wants a reply from you. No. Govern yourself. Even if they think bad of you, so what? You are disciplined. 
And that brings us to the last point. Certain people need to be deleted from your phone book, from your social networking links, from your WhatsApp, from your BBM, from your Facebook, from your Twitter, whatever else it is. Certain people need to be blocked. They need to be deleted. Take them out and block them. You know why they need to be blocked. You know. If they are coming in between yourself and Allah, block them. If they are between you and your contentment, block them. If they are trying to achieve something wrong from you, block them. It will result in great happiness once you have blocked people. You sometimes do not need such people in your lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He open our doors. I've spoken for longer than I expected to speak. But then again, social networking is a topic. No matter what you say about it, it will never be enough. Do you know why? As we are breathing, technology is progressing. So the more we talk, the more it will progress. In fact, even when we stop breathing, technology will keep progressing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our children. Today we are discussing these issues. One wonders what will, what will be discussed five years down the line. May Allah make it easy for us and for them. Until we meet again sometime, I hope and I pray what I've said will be of benefit to myself and yourselves. And I hope we've got a little bit of direction and dimension. And at the same time, we say, وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته